Before we begin today's foibles, I want to give a quick shout out to the patrons in the Mutt tier. We've got Wilma, Glad Goku, Dare Denny, Kale Bennett, That Jordo, Ken K of Warheads, SP can't come to the phone right now, please leave a message after the beep, beep, Serious Skeptic, Biotin, and I've bought the entire helium supply. Have fun blowing up balloons now. Thank you. Hi, what's up? I'm Channel Pup, the mascot for the level-headed fanboy. And due to other work and other commitments, it's been a while since I last made a YouTube video and I've kind of forgotten how to video, so we're just gonna do a nice easy one to get back into things again. Thanks to user HF6SP8NT3Q, what a username, for suggesting the idea for this video. Because today we are going to be ranking the top 15 MCU superhero costumes. Now this is just superheroes, I'm not going to be including anti-heroes or villains, because that can be done at a later date. That being said, some of the things I classify as heroes on this list are probably up for debate, so I'm probably opening myself up to ridicule, but it is what it is. I have set myself a little rule, one suit per character, because here's the thing. I am a very highly biased Spider-Man fan. As well as that, you might have seen other ranking lists I've done of like character specific suit rankings, and this list might even contradict those lists, but like my approach to ranking these costumes is going to be different when it is within the context of like the greater Marvel Cinematic Universe. Kind of the roles that these suits play and just kind of how much I like them as well. If you want to know where I stand overall on MCU costumes, I think they do a really nice job at adapting these characters in a way that fits in kind of a very contemporary and sort of grounded world. Like, these costumes have a nice baked-in context to them while still representing the comic book costumes, often being immediately recognizable, so that's where I kind of stand on that. They can be a little much on kind of the differing textures, the layers, panels, and lines and stuff like that, but I do think that is a much rarer occasion than I think a lot of people give it credit for. So before we get stuck into this top 15 list, if you love superheroes, if you love Marvel, you are in a good place right now, and it would mean the world to me if you would hit that subscribe button for more Marvel, more superhero stuff, shooting up your pee hole like an amoeba. And of course, this video, like all my videos, is brought to you thanks to the support of my patrons. To find out more about how you can become a patron, as well as the different benefits that come with it, a link to the Patreon is in the description below, as well as a link to the Ko-Fi page for one-off support. All of it goes a long way to helping me out. This is effectively my full-time job now, so it helps me stay fed. All right, without further dudes, let's get stuck in. And at number 15 is Rocket Raccoon from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And I really wanna mention that this is the top 15. This is the cream of the crop. There are no bad suits on this list or any suits that are anything short of fantastic. So in Volume 3, all of the Guardians of the Galaxy got their iconic red and blue double-breasted military outfits. Something that I was hoping to see for a while, because while I did appreciate that each character had their own kind of distinct style, their own distinct wardrobe in the previous two movies, as the Guardians of the Galaxy become more of an established force in the universe, it does make sense for them to gain their own little uniforms. And I've always loved the way those blue and red uniforms look. Now the question is, why did I choose Rocket Raccoon? Simply put, I think he rocks this outfit the most. Guess that's why they call him Rocket Raccoon. I say as if Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 didn't actually have an explanation for why he's called Rocket Raccoon. But also just like, it's helped by the fact that I look at Rocket Raccoon in this and I'm like, he's the complete package. That is Rocket Raccoon. Whereas like Star-Lord, Oh, we're so close to perfection. This close. But where's his helmet? Obviously, I don't think the movie is obligated to include every single bit of those comic book costumes. It's like, oh man, we were this close. And the helmet looks so badass, and there was a point in the movie where he actually did need a helmet to breathe in space. And all it led to was a fake-out death. I, I, I digress. It wasn't going to take much to make these blue and red costumes look good in live action, and it didn't take a lot to do that. Yes, they're a little more textured than they appear in drawing because, I mean, that is what happens when a costume is made of tangible materials with seams and stuff. But it's pretty much one-to-one. -one. It absolutely honors that original design. And it looks damn good. In at number 14 is the Ms. Marvel costume worn by Kamala Khan in the Ms. Marvel TV series. 
Now there's a costume that came out swinging. This kind of like epitomizes everything I really like about MCU costume design in that, yeah, that's Ms. Marvel all right, but it's got that sheen of the screen movie magic quality to it. I will say this, like part of the appeal of Ms. Marvel's costume is that kind of thrown together quality of it. And I think we are kinda missing that, but I do think this costume still ultimately honors the character of Kamala Khan as well as the source material. And they just made it look damn good. I don't really have a problem with them just layering up these designs. I don't consider the chainmail or additional details to be in any way kind of an affront to that original design, nor does it smother it. It's all done in ways that punctuate that classic design. And it's just, I look at it and it's like, yeah, that is Ms. Marvel. That is Kamala Khan. It does a great job at representing the character in the series, and it does a great job at adapting the source material. So it's kind of everything an MCU costume should be. In at number 13 is the Ant-Man suit from Captain America Civil War. Super overlooked suit. I know that a lot of people are gonna be surprised I went with this one. And preference does play a role here because like, I think the Ant-Man 1 Ant-Man suit does a great job at kind of representing the, the heritage and history behind this Ant-Man suit. It looks a lot more lived in than this one. But this one just looks really, really cool. The guy looks like Ultraman and it makes me smile. And in that regard, it kind of does go against the grain of some of the other MCU costumes. It's not all dark and leathery looking, it just looks clean and new and fresh and I like it. I also really love the shades of red on this thing, how they've added a little bit of gray to complement the red and black. It looks nice and soft and comfy, but I also love how shiny and clean the helmet is too. It's like, yeah, this is a brand new sort of Mark II Ant-Man suit. That's how it would look if the Ant-Man suit were made for the modern day now. If we had one that was made for Scott Lang and not Hank Pym, this is how that would look. Which makes it kind of a shame they backpedaled on so many of the new elements introduced to this suit in the subsequent suits. The Ant-Man suits peaked here for me, and it's just been downhill since then. In at number 12 is Thor from Avengers Infinity War. This is the point where I tell you it's not all about comic accuracy because this is not by any stretch Thor's most comic accurate look in the MCU. This one goes against the grain in a lot of ways. They've ditched his luscious locks. He's wearing a much darker palette, but my God, does it ever look badass. Bonus points for the eye patch. It looks best when he has the eye patch with it. There's just such a presence to this. The man looks like he is ready for battle. It still has all that warrior's regalia that you would expect from a Thor costume. It still has these accents on there that do fit in well with Norse mythology. I love the way these discs on his chest light up when he's all powered up with the electricity. And there's that lovely contrast between the black of the suit, the circles that light up, and that glorious red cape. That is how you modernize a quintessentially old school character while still honoring the old school nature to that character. Thor has never looked better in my opinion in any piece of media, be it comics, movies, games, anything. This is the best Thor in my opinion. Call me a zoomer all you want, I don't care. It was badass. In at number 11 is King T'Challa's Black Panther costume from Captain America Civil War. Again, talk about coming out swinging. Because this is how you do it. This is how you realize that iconic Black Panther look. It is immediately recognizable as Black Panther. No question about it. But what we have here is a much more textured, much more tangible version of that iconic Black Panther look. So one thing I really like about this Black Panther suit is it looks a bit softer than the more rubberized version that we would get in Black Panther's solo movie. But that's not to say it looks cheap. It doesn't look cheap in the slightest. This looks like a durable warrior's outfit fit for a king. The layering and the different types of fabric, how some of it's a little shinier, a little more emissive while other parts are a bit more matted. But I love how these kind of weave and wind around the form as well in a way that feels very sort of layered, angular and symmetrical, like a lot of sort of African warrior regalia. But it still has that sort of high tech Wakandan feel to it as well. It's a suit that definitely honors this character. And again, the helmet is just beautifully realized. I think this helmet is a lot cleaner than the one he'd go on to get in his solo movie, which looks like it's just a little puffier in comparison. I also appreciate that this one doesn't have any like artificial rubber abs or anything like that. 
It's a very convincing suit. I also just love how the neck piece is incorporated. There's so much that I can say about this that just works so well on so many levels. The only thing I kind of regret is that we never got to see King T'Challa don his cape with that big, massive collar. It always felt so regal. It would have had such a commanding presence on screen. I also understand why they probably didn't want to do that, though. I, I understand that, you know, the more public perception of Black Panther is that all-in-one sort of jumpsuit. It doesn't really have a cape in the more modern iterations of the character that I guess general audiences would be a bit more familiar with. But also, I hate to say it, but like when bringing Black Panther into live action, you are going to run into the thing of how do we make him not look like Batman? A lot of people think that Black Panther looks like Batman. All right, I saw like a Facebook marketplace selling page advertising a Marvel's Batman t-shirt and it had Black Panther on it. Okay, that's real. I saw that. I don't mean to put the person on blast or anything, but it happens. And I think it's a matter of getting rid of the things that are going to be a bit more synonymous with Batman, such as a cape. That's not to say that only Batman can have a cape, but you get the idea. It's also not helped by the fact that most Batman movies up until this point had had Batman wearing an all black getup as well, as opposed to his far more iconic gray color scheme. I actually remember my buddy Darren was sat next to me in the cinema when we watched Captain America Civil War the first time, and he was like, is that Batman? So I, I, I guess at the same time, uh, mission failed, we'll get him next time. But no, no, like, uh, Darren's also really stupid, so. Hi, Darren. In at number 10 is Daredevil's black suit from Daredevil season three, yeah. I gotta tell you the truth, I haven't actually properly seen Daredevil before. I just gotta sit down and apply myself, and I've got so many other things I'm watching right now. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Dragon Ball Z Kai. The Japanese version of Sonic X, can you tell that I'm approaching my 30s? But what I understand of the context behind Daredevil Season 3, and this suit in particular, is that Bullseye has appropriated the red Daredevil suit, and so Matt Murdock has kind of returned to kind of more of a back-to-basics thing. His mental state is in a bit of a different place, though, so we've got a slight slightly more ravaged version of that black suit. This time, rather than just being like a clean all black getup with just like a little black fabric hood and stuff like that, now he's got like these bandage wraps around his hands and they're white so you can see the blood on his hands. Awesome, hard, badass, love it. His mask is more clearly like a piece of ripped fabric. It's got this sort of white lining at the bottom of it. Really, really cool. And he's rocking gray pants, so it's not an entirely all black getup. So one thing you gotta know about me is I got a huge soft spot for like homemade suits and preliminary suits. I got a lot of love for the homemade Spidey suit in Spider-Man Homecoming. I got a lot of love for that makeshift Quicksilver outfit from WandaVision. Unfortunately, in this instance, I don't think the iconic red suit lives up to the black suit. I know that they have updated this for Daredevil Born Again, and I still think it doesn't match the black suit. Daredevil isn't a guy that needs to be running around in an expensive combat getup to me. I think these black makeshift suits just say a lot more about his character. And moving forward, I would definitely prefer to have like something like this, maybe with some more red accents on it, and I don't know, maybe you could have some little like stitching seams in the head that look a little like horns. A bit like what they did with Catwoman's mask in The Batman, how, you know, the stitching made it look like it was ears, but actually in universe it was just where the seams are. I want to see him find a way to turn this into this, as opposed to completely uprooting the costume to look like barely any different from Ant-Man. I don't think the red suit's bad by any means, but it just, it looks like a goddamn jigsaw puzzle. And I, I do agree with the sentiment that this is one instance where it does look like the MCU characters all have the same tailor. Do I need the double Ds on the chest? Uh, obviously not, he's a man, what are you talking about? In at number nine is the Deadpool suit from Deadpool and Wolverine. Is this even fair, to be honest? Because Deadpool did actually have an established look in the Fox universe, and this is that same Deadpool. I guess the question is, had Deadpool always been in the MCU from the get-go, is this how he would look? I don't know, but there's a reason why they've stayed relatively close to that Fox Universe Deadpool costume instead of doing a drastic redesign, at least for now. I really hope they're not going to do anything too drastic. This suit is different, though. But at the same time, it does bring back everything that I loved about the Fox Universe Deadpool suit. And number one is that it looks like Deadpool. Really helps when you do that. You'd think that'd be obvious, but uh, no, apparently not. So the difference here is it's a little less militaristic than the Fox Universe Deadpool suit. It looks a little thinner as well. It's less leathery, a bit more clothy. That I really like. 
We got a softer Deadpool. It looks a bit more comfy. Okay, one thing I'm a little, like, I, I don't have an opinion on it, to be honest. I don't think it's a positive or a negative, but he's got this, this funny little, like, Robin thing going on on his chest. I'm not sure what that's about, but it ain't bad. It's all right. Yeah, fair enough. Fine. But the real thing that cements this as Deadpool's best suit yet for me is j it preppy colors, basically. It, it's a brighter red. It's cleaner to look at, it's a bit more vibrant, and it's just more fun on the eyes, I guess. Like, the Deadpool suit was never bad. It was always a really, really cool suit, so the chances of me having much to say about this in comparison to the Fox Universe Deadpool suit, it, yeah, there's not a lot to say. It was always a damn good suit. It was always a really faithful adaptation that brought Deadpool straight from the page to the screen in a way that made a lot of sense, but also wasn't, you know, shying away from certain elements of Deadpool, such as the emoting eyes and stuff like that. This new suit does all of that, but now it's got just a slightly nicer sheen to it, I guess. Yeah, little to say about it, but really nice suit. In at number eight is Doctor Strange's costume from Thor Ragnarok, of all things. Don't say it's because of my comics, don't say it's because of my comics, don't say it's because of my comics, it's because of my comics. Look, man, the difference between the different Doctor Strange outfits are marginal at best. I know he got a new outfit in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, but I can barely tell a difference. What's crazy to me is that he gets a whole ass new outfit in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, I can barely tell the difference. Here, it's the exact same costume he wore in the first Doctor Strange, but with yellow gloves. Look, man, look, I, I just, I'd rather, you know, thing is, my monkey brain is happy looking at it, okay? Look, as it is, I could just say the Doctor Strange suit for this one, because it's that but with yellow gloves. So I'm gonna move off of the yellow gloves. The yellow gloves are the reason I picked this version of it, but I'm gonna move off of the yellow gloves now and talk about the rest of it. I didn't know how hard they were necessarily going to go with Doctor Strange's costume at the time. Yes, the MCU already had pretty much established that. Yeah, they did things more or less like the comics in terms of design, but Doctor Strange has always had quite a, you know, a very out there get up. Could they justify it, or would they just put him in like a three-piece suit with some red and blue accents on it? No, they went hard and gave us an instantly recognizable Doctor Strange. That's awesome. And it looks really, really good too. They've done the MCU thing where they've toned down the colors, and, and no, it is not just because <laughs> manialism. It's more because that is just how fabric looks. Fabric is not as bright as ink, usually. And also because this is meant to have kind of like a very ancient sort of, you know, wizardry look to it. And in the real world, these kind of wizardry cultures or anything like that weren't running around in these bright, vibrant outfits. It honors the kind of history of this character in the MCU in our more contemporary, realistic world, while at the same time being very obviously comic book Doctor Strange. They nailed it with this design the first time around. And the most I can really say about the Multiverse of Madness version is they didn't ruin it, and I'm really grateful for that. I'm also actually grateful that Doctor Strange is not one of those MCU characters that changes his getup every fucking movie. So that's nice. Some yellow gloves here and there, fine. Maybe the guy's just gotta do the dishes. In at number seven is the Scarlet Witch costume from WandaVision. Now it's funny because Wanda had had some superhero getups in the past in the MCU. This was before she was dubbed the Scarlet Witch, however. So I wonder what the context there was, because, like, the, the clothes that she wore in, like, Civil War, that, that is not just clothes that people wear. Now, I'd kind of accepted at this point that they just weren't going to do the Scarlet Witch outfit, and I, I thought what we had before was a perfectly fine representation. Like, it took on board the colors of that costume. It was a nice, flowy outfit. But let's be real here, like... <laughs> You're gonna be hard-pressed to find a, an actor that's gonna agree to wear that. Look, man, I'm a red-blooded male. I'll hold my hand up and say, yeah, this is pleasing on the eyes. But there's only one director I know that could get an actress to wear that outfit there, and his name is Axel Braun. That's not to say that they ignored the allure of the classic Scarlet Witch look, because they did allow her to show a little chest, I guess. Wow talking about the rare woman superhero in the MCU and you're talking about her chest. Look, it's something that does need to be talked about when you're adapting this into live action, okay? This long flowy coat look was a good compromise. What we have here is better. 
Because yeah, I am absolutely getting down with this. This is the first time that the Scarlet Witch has ever truly looked like a superhero in these movies, which is funny considering she was starting her villain arc here. Yeah, that's right, I said she's a villain. Come at me, haters. Now, how do you justify a superhero running around with his little tiara on their head? Answer, it's magic. This suit just manifests itself onto Wanda Maximoff. This is the point where she truly becomes the Scarlet Witch. This is the point where she actually gets the name the Scarlet Witch. And that is a very appropriate way of handling the story. I like it. And it looks clean. I actually really like the black leggings. It's a shame they got rid of that for Multiverse of Madness in favor of an all red getup, which is also much more muted as well. And I get why, because she's in a darker place. I, I get it. I get what's going on here. But this is just pleasing to the eye. I even like the little detail that in her neck piece, there's a little slot open for like the Vision's Infinity Stone. That's kind of cute. Just a nice detail. And yes, it's one that definitely honors the character. It also honors the source material as well. And while yes, it's a bit more progressive than, you know, Wanda's outfit in the comic books, doesn't she look dynamite? In at number six, this is like the most underutilized thing I've ever seen in my entire life, but it is War Machine from Iron Man 2. Gotta tell you, when it came to aesthetics, I think Justin Hammer really beat out Tony Stark when it came to the War Machine outfit. This is the expense of advancing technology. The Iron Man suits, and this applies to the War Machine as well, gradually became more and more kind of space agey looking and more futuristic, and that is because Iron Man's Stark tech was becoming more and more advanced in the MCU. But like how I prefer a Cadillac to a Tesla, I prefer the earlier Iron Man suits to the later ones. And the same absolutely goes for War Machine. This one actually looks like a War Machine and not like a fucking action figure. I mean, okay, to be fair, there's nothing actually wrong with the later War Machine designs. I even like the look of Iron Patriot. I think it looks really cool. War Machine has never had a bad look, let's be real, but there's something that just goes so hard about the grit of that first War Machine suit. It was less superhero-y and it looked like a modded out Iron Man suit, as opposed to something that Tony had designed specifically for Rhodey. It's bulky, it's not streamlined, and it looks raw as hell, because look, he's got red eyes and a red arc reactor. That's how you know he's made by someone evil. He got this big ass Gatling gun on the side of his shoulder. He looks heavy and stood next to Iron Man, who does have that more sort of superhero-y streamlined look. This just looked so cool. There was such a cool dichotomy between these two. The later War Machine suits were good, but they ain't this. In at number five is the Captain America suit worn by Sam Wilson in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which they're apparently getting rid of in the next movie. And they've gotten rid of his little snood thing going on as well. Oh man, that ain't the same. I've heard things about how they had to like CGI it to hug his neck better so you wouldn't like see it puff out, but it's almost like that is what the material would do. So I'm okay with seeing it do that in the movie. Come on, Marvel. We don't have to be conditioned to be so shallow all the time. Imperfections on these outfits look cool. Wait, yeah, anyways. Okay, new Captain America Mark 1. So naturally, bonus points for being a straight up tra- b b Bonus points for being a straight up translation of the classic Sam Wilson Captain America suit. Steve Rogers has, you know, the stars and stripes, but Sam Wilson has the star and more stripes. And it just looks really cool. And I like the white accents to the top part around like the neck and shoulders as well. It just looks so clean. But it's also helped by the fact that this does look like a natural evolution of the MCU's Captain America suit. We are seeing some of those same technologies applied there uh, for better and worse, actually. I wish the MCU could get the stick out of their ass and just let a stripe be a stripe. Why, why do we, what does this do? What, what do these extra angles do here? Why do we have this? Why do his chest stripes look like knives? Oh great, I've just started a discourse now, haven't I? Everyone's gonna be saying that's a 0 out of 10 suit in T minus. Yep, okay, fine. It isn't perfect, but my god does it ever look awesome. It's a suit that both manages to honor Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson. It honors the entire history of Captain America in the MCU. As I say, some of those very MCUifications of this suit are still very much honoring the history of this character, so it is like a for better or for worse kind of situation. Also, his glasses look rad. Yeah, that is the new Captain America. A until the next movie. God damn it. In at number four is the Captain America suit worn by Steve Rogers 
in Captain America the Winter Soldier, but not the one that most people put on their lists. I'm actually going to go for the Smithsonian suit. Now, I know I said one suit per character, but it's a loophole, isn't it? These are two different characters, but they're both Captain America. So I thought what they did with Captain America's suit in Captain America the First Avenger was nothing short of genius. Where you've got this all-in, we did all of it, Captain America suit for the Star Spangled Man scene, and then you evolve that into this is the MCU's Captain America, which is a military uniform designed to look like the American flag. That's great because you've got the best of both worlds. And as it stands, I wouldn't have minded too much if they didn't do the Star Spangled Man kind of thing because uh, it still looks like Captain America. It is still immediately recognizable as Captain America. Don't get the wrong idea about that though. The Star Spangled Man scene is my favorite scene in that film. So no, I wouldn't have been cool if they cut it. But I'm just saying like, if this was the only Captain America suit in that film, it is still intrinsically Captain America. This redefined how Captain America looks. He's not a guy that is covered in scales running around in spandex. He's a, he's a guy wearing a specialist military uniform designed to be kind of marketable as well. And that is how Captain America would look. But I'm not even talking about that suit. Get that out of here. I'm talking about the Smithsonian's reproduction of that suit that he wears and steals at the end of Captain America the Winter Soldier. The differences here are marginal, but they just look a lot better. For one, I like the layout better on this suit. The proportions are just a bit better on this suit. The Captain America design is just more punctuated this time. You've also got the extra red stripe going down the tummy, and it, it just balances the look better in my opinion. The colors are a little less dirty because this is a reproduction of the suit rather than the original thing. What can I say? I think the Smithsonian did it better. Hell yeah. I think in a previous video I said that the Endgame cap suit was my favorite cap suit, but I'm definitely going to backpedal that. I like this a lot better. Yeah, the Endgame one has the scales on it, but I I'm not fond of how they did the stripes. Again, Marvel Studios, why can't a rectangle just be a rectangle? But also it's like super muted for no actual reason. And again, there is so much more to design than just mm, my preppy colors, but like, I, I just think this looks overall better. Plus again, I prefer a Cadillac to a Tesla. No school like the old school. Rampant bigotry and misogyny. Hell yeah, those were the days. Oh wow, I'm no longer approaching 100K anymore. What happened? I swear I was joking. In at number three is Wolverine from Deadpool and Wolverine. Jesus Christ, it feels weird to be saying that. The Jack is back, and he's got his very own MCUified take on the Wolverine costume, which in this case just means it actually looks like Wolverine this time. This is what I think everyone was predicting the second we knew that the X-Men were coming to the MCU, was that we would be getting the yellow suits in some capacity. Like, look, you're getting Hugh Jackman back for one last encore run as Wolverine, right? So, like, there's one last thing to do. I kind of almost respect some of the Fox universe's adamancy against putting the X-Men in the yellow suits. Even though I prefer the yellow suits, I do also admire that they were just kind of letting their filmmakers run rampant on that one. But this is just like bottled water, you know? I spent years drinking straight from the tap. And that's fine, that's good, it's all water at the end of the day, but this right here is like a good old bit of bottled water, you know? You don't get it on a regular basis and you're just like, mmm, yummy. How do you justify that version of Wolverine only just now running around in a yellow suit? Well, good thing you've got Deadpool in this movie to justify literally anything. And look at what a nice job they've done with it. I was low-key hoping it would be the yellow and blue version, and that is exactly what we're getting here. The brown and yellow version's nice too, but the blue and yellow version, that just hits different for me. I think my only critiques are A, what is up with superhero costumes having really high up belts? And B, I just, I wish that belt wasn't quite so shy about itself. You know, you got that X belt buckle there. I wish the X was bigger, prouder, you know? Come out to play a little more. Other than that, I can't fault it. But also, yeah, he is gonna wear the helmet. We've got images of some merchandise and yeah, you can see he's wearing the helmet on it. Look at it. Just look at that. That's Wolverine. How have we had so many movies have Wolverine in them and only now are we getting to see him wearing the Wolverine costume? I don't know, but like at the same time, I'm not even mad about it. I would not go to James Mangold and be like, yeah, put him in the yellow suit in the Logan movie. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Now we can embrace all of the benefits of our corporate overlords having a monopoly on the entire film industry and enjoy our movies on those streaming services before they disappear forever. But it's so 
okay because Wolverine is at least wearing the yellow costume. And I'm sure I'm gonna love this movie. I just hate Disney. All right, number two, I wanna know what kind of tamales the designer of this one was eating because how the hell did they pop off on the Mark V Iron Man armor this hard? Look at that thing of absolute beauty. I remember when Iron Man 3 rolled around and they were doing the publicity of all the different outfits that were gonna be in that movie and they had the, the Silver Centurion making its cinematic debut. I'm like, yeah, that's cool and all, but like, it's not like we didn't have like a way cooler red and silver armor for Iron Man. In the previous movie, I mean, hello. Okay, the Iron Man 3 Silver Centurion is the comic one in a literal sense, but bro, look at this. Where do I begin with how much I adore this outfit? Takes me right back to 2010 when I was obsessed with that scene where Tony gets the briefcase and he's pulling it on himself and it turns into the Iron Man armor and it's like a makeshift sort of lower tech version of the Iron Man suit, yet it still manages to be the coolest one I've ever seen in my entire life. The start is gorgeous, rich, cherry red. Oh, I love how that looks. The chrome instead of the gold and how you can see all these mechanisms and they all serve a purpose as you see this suit form around his body. How the hell do you look at those nanotech suit-ups and think, oh yeah, that's way cooler than this? Someone needs to make like an ASMR video of those Iron Man suit-up sound effects divorced from the music and dialogue because I could listen to that and go to sleep. At the same time, though, no complaints about John Debney's soundtrack during the Mark V suit-up scene. So cool. What more to say? Love it. Iron Man Mark V fans, rise up. Anyone could have predicted this, couldn't they? In number one, it's a Spider-Man suit. In first place as my all-time favorite MCU suit, we have the Iron Spider. <laughs> okay, no, I'm joking. It's not the Iron Spider. It is the upgraded suit. Now I know what you're thinking. Why not the new red and blue from the end of Spider-Man No Way Home? And I hear you. I really, really hear you. It is perfect, isn't it? And someday, it's very likely that it will become number one on my list of MCU suits. The problem is, I need to see a practical version of it. Once I have that, and if it still looks good, which I don't doubt it will, it will get that number one spot. But for a Spider-Man suit, you gotta be practical. I understand why it was CGI there. It was only on screen for a few seconds and it was a swinging scene. So like, why wouldn't it be? Wait, you mean Tom Holland can't actually do that? Well, he's fucking shit then, isn't he? Yeah, dude, j like, just wait, all right? Just, just wait. That's what I'm gonna do. If you're putting it at number one on your list, completely fine. Get it? Yeah, makes sense. Look, when I look at my Marvel Legends Tom Holland Spider-Man figures, my favorite one of the bunch is definitely the new red and blue. I, j I need to see the suit done practically. I need to see it, man. But of the suits that we do have so far, yeah, I'm going for the upgraded suit. Why? Because, I mean, just look at it. It is beautiful. This is the suit I think of when I think MCU Spider-Man, specifically the No Way Home version of the suit where they retconned a new belt onto the design. Just looks better. The thing I really love about this is that it honors Spidey history in a very big way. But at the same time, they've kind of made it their own. They've gone against the grain of what your conventional classic Spidey suit is in these movies. You might be wondering, why didn't you pick the Stark suit from Homecoming? And it's a gorgeous suit, and it's really nostalgic to me now looking back, remembering all the hype surrounding MCU Spider-Man for the first time. Ah, oh, take me back. I feel like the upgraded suit is like that design tidied up, because that Homecoming suit was almost perfect. But I didn't like some of the lines going on on the blue sections, which didn't look like seam lines or anything. They just kind of looked like they were there for the hell of it. And I think the colors and kind of the shapes of the red section on the upgraded suit are just a lot more pleasing. But okay, so the suit is red and black, and that pays homage to the early Steve Ditko run. And I thought it was cool to get like a main Spider-Man costume actually commit to just being red and black, no blue on it. I believe the actual prop was like a very, 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 very dark blue so that it would never show up like green or anything on camera. But in universe, it's red and black. These black sections, I like much more than the blue sections. I like this piping that we've got going on and how it still looks like a very intricate weaved web. Much nicer than the sort of checkerboard fabric that we had on the blue sections. And I'm really pleased that that texturing has made its way over to the new red and blue suit. Beautiful. Then we've got the white accents on the spider on the chest. 
this was kind of before I was completely and utterly sick of every new Spider-Man design putting white on the costume. No offense to Vanilla Ice, I think he really pulls it off well. It's just, everybody's doing it now. Everybody's doing it. You know what? No disrespect to anybody. You do what you want to do. It's just my own little hang-up. But yeah, I like that rather than having a full-on white spider on the chest, we've got, like, little white accents on the legs. Looks awesome! I like the white spider on the back and how it offsets the blue. Really nice. My favorite part about this is those gloves, man. They just look badass! The way the very fine web texture on the black sections weaves around the hands, almost kind of like those wraps that Daredevil has. And then, mmm, the piece de la resistance. Uh, did, did I say that right? Is the little red fingers with the black gloves. Oh, it just looks sick. Also, like those black rubber stripes that were on the homecoming suit, they now much more punctuate those red sections instead of cutting through them, which I really, really like. It's a cleaner, slicker, lower tech suit than the Stark suit. And I just think this thing is all kinds of beautiful. That is Spider-Man. And it's sadly quite an underutilized suit in the grand scheme of things. I, I don't think it got anywhere near as much screen time as the Stark suit or the Iron Spider, which, which is such a shame. But hey, we did at least get some time with it in Spider-Man Far From Home and Spider-Man No Way Home, respectively. Before Doc Ock had to go and ruin everything. I mean, I, I do like the integrated suit, but like, it, it ain't this, you know? All right, there you go. That's the list. Anyone surprised that Spider-Man came out on top? Whoa, wowee. But what do you guys think? What are your like top 10, top 15, top whatever MCU superhero costumes? You can bet in the future I'll do one for villains too. We could do DCEU as well, that ought to be fun. As always, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to support more like it, be sure to hit subscribe, hit that like button, and in the description below is the link to my Patreon page, where for as little as a dollar a month, you can get your name in the credits of these videos as well as updates on my fan films. A special shout out goes to the patrons in the $5 and above tiers. First of all, RT0, welcome to my Patreon page, you Dirty furry porn artist. Yeah, that's right. I'm not ashamed. He's an old high school buddy of mine. And then we got Wilma, Calex, Richard Rogers, Glad Goku, Dare Denny, SSS06, Kale Bennett, That Jordo, Ken K of Warheads, Dazzle Fizzle, SP can't come to the phone right now. Please leave a message after the beep. Beep. Surus a skeptic. Biotin. I bought the entire helium supply. Have fun blowing up balloons now and Vera Wild. Thank you folks so much for your generosity, and to those of you at home, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. The video's over, get out.